How's it going everybody? This is Waze back with another video on the channel. Today we're going to be using Docker to set up the development environment. Now initially when I was developing uh, quite some time ago, I always go ahead and then install things directly in my computer, whether it's a Mac or a Windows. What would happen is like over time when you start installing things directly onto your machine, your machine storage will have a lot of cache and some things that you don't really need but they're just sitting on your hard drive and then your SSD or hard drive will start to fill up pretty quickly. And this is just one benefit. You can actually do full development including file system directly in a Docker container. And that's going to be the goal for this video. I'll show you when you spin up a new development environment. So there's a new feature in Docker where you see this called dev environment. It's preview, but it works pretty good. I've been using these environments for pretty much all sort of development. So Node.js development, you got Java covered, Python, and you can also open the you know code directly sitting in your container in your Mac computer or Windows computer and make it look like you're just using Windows, but in the background you're gonna be using Linux and you're gonna be developing directly on container. The benefit is that if let's say you finish with the project and you will get rid of a container, which will also get rid of all the packages that you install and your computer will be clutter free. Because you're developing a container, your developer environment is done through certain scripts that you can actually reuse and spin up another dev environment just writing some scripts or copy pasting scripts, which saves a lot of time. So you will have a new development environment or development machine by just copy pasting. So that's the goal for this video. I will show you how you can set up the uh, dev container and also show you in how to install a node, Java, Python, even Flutter SDK. So there's gonna be a bunch of scripts that I'm gonna be running for this video. And it took me a while to set them up because uh, you gotta know certain things to be able to actually make your developer container as your development machine. Without further ado, let's get started. Got Docker Desktop installed, click on Dev Environments. I've got this one dev environment running. It's actually stopped right now, but I just created that previously. I will click on this create button and then click on get started. Here you got two options, existing repo. You can connect your existing repo if you have in your local computer, or you can specify the local directory. In this case, I'm gonna use the local directory. I'm gonna click on select. I'll go to remote and I'll just use this tutorials folder because this will be my development machine for all the tutorials that I create on this channel. I'll click on continue. It is going to pull the base image and set up the development container for me. So it's done. Click on continue. You will get to see an option open in VS code. Click on done and I can click on this open in VS code. First of all, let's open terminal. You'll notice that the folder that you selected in your Docker desktop, it is mounted to your container. So everything you do here, you can basically, let's say if I create touch help test.txt file, and you can see I just created a test.txt file using the Docker container. Any repository that you clone or do any coding in this folder will be saved in your Mac or Windows hard drive that you mounted. I wanna take a different approach because I wanna be developing parallelly in this container and think of this container as a virtual machine. I would like to use its own file system. So I'll use cd slash home and we are in a home directory right now. First of all, I would like to give a full permission. So if I try to touch test.txt file, you'll see it says permission denied and you don't have a permission. So the way you enable this permission, I'm going to use sudo chown-r vs code and vs code is basically the name of the user and by default it's vs code so i'll specify vs code and dot dot is referring to the current directory that we're in so i want to give a full permission to vs code to this home directory enter now you got the uh, full access to this directory and if i use touch test.txt file you'll see we created that i would like to use this command o and actually go to home directory and you'll see the file is there okay 
Now let's open the terminal again. Now we're going to be using some update scripts or sudo apt update. And once this is updated, then we will use the script upgrade. So sudo apt upgrade y, which is going to tell it, yep, accept all the terms and conditions or any options that it wants you to accept. Once this is done, then one of the main things that we need to have to build certain things, for example, if you're doing mobile development using Ionic Framework or React Native, you're going to need the C++ and uh, some other G++ compilers. And the way you can grab those is by using the sudo app get install build essential. Select Y, enter. Once you have this installed, then we will move to installing Node via NPN. Not NPN, NVM. Maybe I'm going to try zooming in a bit. So I'll use this script. And you can find this script by searching in the Google NVM install. It's a Node version manager, and that's the script that I'm using. So script is available here. In case it changes, uh, you can always go and get the latest one. So I'm going to be pressing enter and it is going to make the NVN available for me. Now, because I need to run the bash file again, so you could do that by using source bash RC. And now if I type NVN LS, you'll see no node version install. So while we're here, I'm going to be using NVN install dash dash LTS, it's going to install the long term supported version, which in this case is 16.15.0. Node is installed. Next, we are going to install zip and unzip. So the script for that is this sudo apt get install zip unzip. And you can also install a call and make uh, because we built this uh, using an essential. You don't really need to have that. So I might have to uh, change in my script. So press enter. Now we've got zip installed. The next thing that I would like to install is this SDK man IO, which helps me to install versions of JDKs. I can install different SDKs. For example, we got this groovy grails. You got um, there are a lot of uh, things, for example, this Spring Boot, if you want to set it up, it's very, very easy. So the script for installing that is, let me paste that here. Okay, enter, and it will have the SD command install. Now in Safari, I can show you this script exists here. Okay. Now we got that install, you can type SDK. It will say it's not found, so we can just use this source command to run our bash RC. SDK will be available now. I would like to install GitHub CLI. A GitHub CLI is an amazing command line tool. So GitHub CLI, it basically allows you to look at your repository clone, make a pull request, review a pull request, anything that you can do in UI, you can do with GitHub CLI as well. So I love using this. Now there's a script for that. I'm going to just paste that to save time. And this is like the curl command and you'll find that script in the link of the available in the description of this video. And then you have this sudo apt install gh. Enter. It's going to install GitHub CLI. And I'll show you how you can validate it as well. So for that GH, you'll see GH is available. So you can do GH auth login. Once you log in, select this GitHub and then HTTPS or SSH. Um, I'll use HTTPS. And then you say authenticate Git with your GitHub credential. I'll say yes. And it's going to ask you if you want to authenticate using the browser or pasting a token. I'll use the browser because I I am going to be logged in into GitHub and here's a here's a, a key that you have to copy from here. So here's the key EA D65 
and 04. That's just like a generated on the fly. You can actually copy that, which I did. I'll just paste it here. Actually, I didn't copy it yet, so I'll just copy that and then paste that here, continue, and then I'll just give it full access to it. It's gonna ask me to log in. I don't wanna log in right now, but again, I'll just kill it by pressing Control C. Okay, so GitHub CLI is installed. Next thing I like to install is uh, Python using Miniconda. So here's another script for that. You'll find that in the description of this video. So you gotta do a call and download this Arch or whatever the operating system that you're using. If it's an AMD or it's a x86, make sure you check your uh, operating system and then change this word. And I'll show you where you can find this script as well. So I'm gonna be just pressing enter and it's going to download this uh, miniconda.sh and then run it with bash command. And if I go to Safari, I'll go and show you Miniconda, go to Conda documentation. And then here you'll find the script. So basically what I did, I just right clicked it and then copy link. And I used the curl command to do that. Press enter and you get to accept uh, these are maybe they are, want you to read it once you get to this please answer yes or no type yes press enter and it's going to unpack the the python yes and now i'm going to kill this terminal and i'm going to open the terminal again now you can see it is uh, using conda as a uh, base python environment and i can type python version and you'll see 3.9.12 that's the latest version at the time of this recording now you got node installed if you want to install java so use sdk install java i'll use the version 15.0.1 dash open you can use the whatever the version that you want and you can find that as well by using this sdk list command so let me take you to the documentation and if you look at this usage guide, it'll ask you, it'll tell you how to find the specific um, candidate, they call it. So if you type SDK list, you'll find what you can install. And then you find the repository name, then it will give you the versions of uh, available uh, SDKs in, in terms of that technology. So now it's installing Java, we'll have a Java install as well. Now, given that, uh, you notice that we are in VS Code and I'm in a Mac computer. So it's basically working on a Mac using Safari, Chrome or Edge browser, but also not installing all these packages into my main computer, which means anytime I don't want to have any um, a development environment, I can just get rid of this container and then start fresh. Because let's say if I install Java 15, right? and then I have other project which requires Java 17, then I'll have a both version stall and also have all the file system used for those versions. In, in this case, I can just get rid of the container and then, you know, start fresh. Now you got a Java there as well now. So you got Java 15.0.1 installed as well. Now, how do we clone and use this as a virtual environment? I'm gonna give you, show you my workflow. So I'll go to, let's say, github.com and I'm going to find a, a repository there. So let's just say um, capacitor. So here's a repository capacitor. It's an open repository. So I will just copy the link and I'll say git clone and then paste that. Now you will notice that it is cloning into this home folder. What I usually like to do is create a dev folder into the home directory and clone all the repositories there. So in this case, I have the source code cloned in the container and I don't really clutter my main macOS space, which means if I don't want it, I will just get rid of it. So I'll press command O and go to this capacitor folder, press enter, and you'll notice the VS code will open again and you have the source code for that. And this just sits in your container, okay? Remember that command that you did sudo 
chown-r and then you give a full permission to this VS Code user. Another command that I would like to show you is how do we stop this base environment to always be available in every time you open a terminal. You can actually use this command conda activate sorry conda config let me just paste that conda config set auto activate base false and now if i kill the terminal and open that again you'll see that uh, python uh, base environment is not activated automatically cool so basically from here i will open docker and let's say if i stop the uh, i want to stop all the servers and everything i'll just go ahead and then just stop this okay and then VS Code will be complaining. I'll just cancel out and close this environment. Now what I do is I'll just make sure that this does not get deleted while I'm working on a project. And if you don't, then you should not have any problem because this button can be a bit risky here. So let's say if I want to go back to that project or start developing, uh, I'll just click on start command. Once the start is done, I'll click on this open in VS Code and this will open the VS code into my uh, mounted folder. But if I go to uh, command O and then go to home directory and you will see that the capacitor folder is still there. So that means any code changes or anything that I did, it's there. I can commit it from directly here. So basically all the projects are sitting in a dev container and I can come back to it anytime I want and do the coding. And my main machine does not get cluttered because all those Python and everything you install, uh, it's sitting in a container. So let's say if you install all these packages directly into your Mac computer, it's going to be very hard for a long term to maintain those packages and not have your computer slow down. And usually the computer slowdown is because all the crap just left over from all the application that you use. So this is why when I use a Mac, I'll make sure that I use this brew package manager, which makes sure that every time I install things, it get rid of everything from it. So yeah. I hope you liked the video and if you did, please subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up as well. And I'll speak to you guys in the next video. Cheers.